Hello, this is Peter, and I wanted to share with you today some of my knowledge on gluing and bonding 3D printed parts, and specifically PLA, which really tends to be a hard one. So uh, I have done quite a bit of research and some other videos on bonding materials, all different materials from plastics to uh, even TPU and rubber, and I'll put the links down below to another channel where I publish those. Uh, but today we're going to specifically really focus on how to bond PLA. Now there's two main methods of bonding. One is by gluing and that's where you'll take two parts and you'll add a glue or a tape or anything, put them together and it is the material that you put between them that hardens and keeps them together. The other method is to weld them. So that might be to heat up these two areas with a soldering gun or friction or other method, put them together and allow the two materials to actually melt together and become one. And another way to do this is to use a chemical that would actually eat through the PLA and bond them together. We do that a lot with acetone for ABS, but acetone has no noticeable effect on PLA. Um, some of the bonding that does work with uh, adhesives is super glue, and I tend to use super glue or CA uh, with an accelerator spray. This helps to cure it faster, set it up, especially when you're holding it and clamping it, and also it fills a little bit of gap. If I really want to fill a gap, then I'll use it together with common baking soda. Um, you put on the super glue, you put down some baking soda, it'll seal it right away and it'll fill a gap. Unfortunately, anytime you're using CA or super glue with PLA, you have a big risk of white hazing. It just, even 10 hours after you've set it, it just seeps through the material and gives a white haze. So if it's for an aesthetic part, you need to bond it outward, you really can't use CA. Sometimes I use epoxy. Those are two part materials that you mix well. And that works really well as well, especially because you can clump it on and leave a large amount. But once again, it's messy to work with and not a great solution for the outside of your product. So I did want to talk about actually some other options, one of which is 3D Gloop, which is one of my favorite products. Um, 3D Gloop, and I'll show you how we use that in a minute, uh, is actually a combination of a solvent which melts the PLA and other additives which give it a little bit of thickness and fill gap and help it to bond even better. They have it for PLA, they have it for PETG, they have it for ABS. I use this all the time. I'll show you how we use it. Um, I'm going to put on some gloves because whenever we're working with these chemicals, we do want to wear gloves, um, face mask, and some kind of goggles. And I do think that safety is very important when working with these solvents and glues. So oh my goggles in this case are going to be my glasses. And I'm not going to wear a face mask so that you can hear me, but I'm working in a well-ventilated area. We're just simply going to take our two parts to bond and put a semi-generous amount of glue on this one side. You could put it on both if there's really going to be a lot of gap. And then you want to kind of align them and clamp them. If there is any excess coming out the sides, you'll give it a quick wipe. Now, what you probably can see from what I'm doing is it's hard to align these pieces. You can see how this is moving around. So what I tend to do, let me actually break this to show you. I'll break this bond before it sets. What I tend to do is I print parts with square holes in them and a little peg. And we put that peg into the hole and then we put the gloop on there and then we push them together. And now you can even clamp them. This will put it into perfect position. It won't go off. Another nice trick is instead of a square hole and a peg, if you want to just go faster, make two to three two millimeter diameter holes and uh, use some filament off the spool as your peg. You just put it into the hole and clip it and use the little piece. You might be able to see that. 
as the peg that aligns it. And I'll, I'll switch between the two depending on what I'm building. So that's the 3D Gloop, and we'll be coming back to that in a minute. Uh, one word of attention for 3D Gloop, it tends to build up on the threads, especially if you're taking the applicator in and out. So make sure that your threads are clean and that it's screwed down completely. Um, I've dried out a few bottles on my own my own fault because I wasn't watching when this built up. It didn't screw down well when I thought it was. And when I came back, it was completely evaporated and dried up. So that's 3D Gloop. Now, there is one more chemical that I want to specifically speak about today, which is really interesting, and that is dichloromethane, or DCM. This is a very dangerous chemical to work with. So once again, masks, well-ventilated area, gloves, eye protection. This stuff is very thin. It evaporates really, really quickly. Um, it becomes carbon monoxide in the air. It gets through your skin and goes right into your bloodstream. So caution when using it. If you use this carefully, you're gonna be fine. You know, I work over a wham bam slap mat because I also don't want this to be ruining my, uh, my workspace. I don't want to get drips onto the table. Now, Andrew Mayhall of 3D Gloop was nice enough to have given me some great advice on using DCM because I had been experimenting with it for a while and I wanted to know his opinion. And DCM is actually one of the active ingredients in 3D Gloop, which is amazing. They, they've gone far beyond it by mixing in other ingredients and getting you that thickness and cleavage and better grip. But this is wonderful, especially when you have to get into tight places. You need a very liquidy type to go in there. And I use it for welding and bonding, but also for finishing off surfaces of objects. Okay, so when you're using this, like I said, you generally would like to pour a little bit of this into, I don't usually use the cap very often, I'll have another container here. If you use the cap, cover the, the bottle while you're doing this. So I'll use the cap in this case, and I might cover the bottle to avoid evaporation. I'll just use an old glove for right now. Then you can use um, applicator brushes or paint brushes to get in there. And I'll show you how I would go about doing this to glue some large parts and small parts. And I'll use a disposable brush to brush this stuff on. It's very thin and it's very easy to evaporate, so I'll put it on abundantly. And then I push the two parts together. And like I said, this is a solvent. So what is it doing? It's actually bonding these two by melting them together. Okay, so I'll put those aside. I wish I had clamps with me right here, but I don't. I'll put those aside, we'll test them later. But let's go ahead and also test it on the part that we were just showing from the other. So I'll put some on both sides, just in case it were to start evaporating. I'll try to get these pins aligned and I'll put it down. Now, another thing that I like to do, let me make sure my hands are dry. Sometimes when I have a 3D print, it came out all perfect, but I might have had to touch up some areas with sandpaper. And you can see how those areas are not the same shine and sheer as the rest. And if that's the case, and this is a part that I'm selling, I can't use it. So what I'll do is I'll take a fine paintbrush and I'll just carefully paint a very thin layer of this right over the areas that I sanded. And what does this do? This basically gives a shine to those areas because it melts them back to the state that they were when you were 3D printing them, to the melted state. There we go. And then the area that I sanded becomes invisible. And one other thing I wanted to show you is, let's say that I had a whole model that I sanded. I was very aggressive with, and I'd like to get this back to the shine that it had when 3D printing. Well, there is something you can do. Once again, make sure you're using gloves and in a well-ventilated area but I'll just get an abundance of this on a paper towel and I'll just give it a quick wipe. Nothing more than a quick wipe is needed. 
and I am melting that surface really quickly and making it shiny again. Let it sit, see if you miss an area and then go back over it. But let me see if I got this pretty well. But you can see, I just put the shine right back on it and took away the sandpaper marks. So it's very possible to use DCM for a variety of uses. Be very careful with it. Pay a lot of attention to your health. Wear gloves, work in a well-ventilated area, wear a breathing mask. But it's a great product. It's hard to get because it has to be shipped with a um, special category of shipping because it is a dangerous material. But if you can find it, and I did buy some, I think, from eBay, uh, this jar here is only used up to there, and I've had this for over a year. I use it quite often. I use it very sparingly. I usually just keep a paintbrush taped to the side ready to, to use for small touch-ups. And that's about it. So let's go back and look at our parts. So here are some of the parts that I bonded with 3D Gloop. I can't break that. <laughs> I can't break that. Like 3D Gloop's amazing stuff. Um, by the way, they never sent me any free Gloop, and I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just giving you some information. Um, here was the DCM welded part. Okay, I was able to break that off, and that is partly because it was so thin that I didn't give it a chance to really be on there. So why don't we go ahead, the nice thing about this is you can just reapply it should you need to. Sometimes I'll even use a syringe to get it into a very tight space if I'm working on a part of the model that lifted or something like that. So we might just cut that. There we go. Okay, another thing that you can do um, if your surface is fine is go ahead and apply this to the outside of a position clamp part. Since it is a very thin, it has low viscosity material, it wicks in to parts that need to be bonded. So sometimes I'll really seal off a part with this, which is amazing. There we go. Let's check out this piece that I bonded earlier. I'm not sure if I've let it set enough, but yep, <coughs> that was bonded with DCM. And I'm going to break the part before I break the bond. Ugh. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you did, please uh, let me know. And if you have any advice or comments or other ways to use DCM or other materials, please let me know that as well. Thank you.